Hey everybody, welcome into the Clayton Britt Show. Today we will be recapping NBA Finals Game 3, Warriors versus Celtics. Final score 116 to 100. Celtics take the lead in the series 2 to 1. Uh, the game was in Boston. I was at the game. It was great. Um, in the show, we're going to start uh, a little bit higher level, kind of talk about the game overall, and then we'll go into some of the key players, and then we'll preview game four. Um, so the Celtics got off to a great start, um, which was fun, and the building was very, very loud. Um, but the question was, in my mind, can they keep up the lead and hold it because the Warriors are so good at making runs and with great shooters like Steph and Clay, it really demoralizes the crowd when they get uh, a quick defensive stop three, quick defensive stop three, and suddenly your eight-point lead is down to two and you feel useless. Um, But they did a great job, and they kept the lead, and they were playing really good defense, making the Warriors really work for it. The Warriors had a lot of shots that I felt were getting off in kind of the last five seconds of the shot clock. Um, So that was great. However, they they were doing a bad job on set plays. The amount of easy layups the Warriors had on inbounds plays and sideline plays was actually really impressive, so credit to Steve Kerr on that one. Um, But then Celtics take the lead going into half. I'm excited. I think everybody's feeling good, but we know what's coming, which is you're playing the Warriors and it's the third quarter. And as we talked about last time, how bad the Celtics are in the third versus how great the Warriors are in the third, it's really an issue. And then when you know, like clockwork, the Warriors cut the lead pretty much in half. And then the Celtics bounce back like a couple minutes into the third. And I'm like, okay, they they withstood the first wave. And then it happened again. There was another wave. And that was where uh, Steph got fouled by Horford and hit the three. And there was a seven, I think it was a seven point possession for the Warriors. So as a person that doesn't know all the ins and outs of basketball, I didn't really know that was possible. Um, But yeah, so that was crazy. And then the Warriors actually took the lead in the third and everybody in the building is like, oh my God, what is happening? but then the Celtics bounced back again. They they clearly showed that they were battle-tested and that the series versus Brooklyn and the series versus Miami and versus Milwaukee had showed them how to withstand runs and bounce back. And they're also a young team, and their coach, Ime Adoka, kind of has given them a no-quit attitude. And I think it could have been very easy for them to roll over in that situation and say, play a great first half, but we just can't coming out of halftime, we can't handle these guys. Um, And so then they withstood the second wave, and then it's pretty much like a a one- or two-point ball game going into the fourth, maybe a little bit more than that. But I actually felt confident because they didn't have that set. They had the seven-minute stretch where they didn't play well, but they didn't stall out, which is so important because when you have a lead and the other team's cutting down into it, you don't need to score that many points to maintain a little bit of a lead. And then once the fourth happened, the Celtics just really played such great defense. And despite Steph and Clay really just getting buckets like the Splash Brothers do, they held on with timely baskets and contributions from everybody. And uh, Celtics closed it out. And so I was overall kind of really impressed with the Celtics and My prediction uh, was right that the Celtics would win. And um, yeah, so that was great. Um, And then kind of going into some more technical stuff, uh, I thought the Celtics uh, had such good big men play from Robert Williams to Grant Williams to Al Horford. They all, the Celtics dominated the boards um, and had tons of offensive rebounds. And that's so good because if the, when you miss, if you can get the rebound, you keep it alive, it keeps the momentum, it keeps the crowd in it, and it also demoralizes the other team. Um, and so I thought that was really big for the Celtics. And Robert Williams had, I think, four or five blocks, and he had a, a game-high plus 21 in the plus-minus column. Um, so that was really impressive. Um, and also the Boston big men were just very efficient scoring too. All of them were over 50% from the field. Um, and yeah, Robert Williams did have four blocks. Um, and when he's in the game, I, he's such a game changer because the Warriors don't attack because 
they they can't. He's he's too athletic. He's kind of like a Bam Adebayo kind of guy, where he's or uh, this is going to be a funny comparison, but uh, LeBron in Miami when he really was guarding one through five. Of he's a very big dude, but he has the lateral quickness and also can kind of step forward and back. Um, and so he was just a monster out there. And a prime example is I think it was fourth quarter, Steph's driving in, goes to do a floater, and he jumps up there and swats it into the second row. And when they showed the slow mo, his hand was the, where he met the ball, the apex was probably. 12 or 13 feet in the air. And so it was, it was very impressive. And it, it appeared that he was a little bit healthier than games one and games two. Um, but I thought Ime did a great job of managing his minutes and rotating him and Grant Williams and Horford in. So I was really, really impressed by that. And then some more just higher level things before we kind of talk about the Tatums and Browns and Curry's of the world was I think the Celtics' issues versus the Warriors have been scheme issues and missed rotations and stuff like that and kind of blown defensive stuff, which will happen when you're playing an incredible offense like Golden State. Um, But I feel like the Warriors' issues versus the Celtics are matchup issues. I don't think they... I, I don't think they can match up. The Celtics are very long... And so that helps. But when you have a guy like Robert Williams or Al Horford or Grant Williams, but really Robert Williams is kind of the most important, when the Warriors go small ball, you can keep him out on the floor because he's athletic enough and quick enough where you can almost switch one through five. You don't want him on Steph. But if it happens, you're, you can live with it where a lot of other teams with less ath- athletic big men, they can't do that. And so... A prime example is when the Mavs went small ball versus Utah, Utah didn't know what to do because they didn't want to take out Rudy Gobert, but Rudy Gobert can't uh, go all the way out to the three-point line um, to cover. And so it put them in a really bad spot, and then the Mavs exploited that. And that the Celtics have kind of eliminated that with the Warriors going small ball because of the fact that he's so athletic and rangy. But also then the issue is that he's now such a good rebounder and the Warriors don't have the size. So where they would traditionally be gaining an advantage offensively, they're not getting it. But then they're also hurt defensively because nobody can handle him because he's so much bigger. And that's why the rebounding disparity was so big. So I thought the Warriors kind of doubled down on small ball and did not get it. Um, So if I'm the Warriors, I'm pretty worried because... I, I don't really know what the adjustments are. I guess you make lineup adjustments, um, and we'll talk about some of those and kind of preview of game four. Um, but yeah, so Robert Williams overall was great. And then you can't talk about the Celtics without talking about Jalen Brown. I mean, what a start. Um, he has been so good for the Celtics, and it's a weird thing because him and Tatum, I think, are very okay with when one of them has it going to let them keep going where there's no, there's very little ego involved and that they're very content with having the other guy win the game. And so it's great because when one is hot, uh, the other is fine with it, but then they can switch off back and forth, back and forth. And so Jalen Brown uh, had the really great first half, but he cooled down towards the end of the game. But I still like that he stayed aggressive But since he had cooled down offensively, he put even more of his focus defensively and he was locking people down. And I think it goes into another big point, which is that it's important to have younger stars because of the intensity level of the game and that they can do it on both ends where the Celtics are, the Celtics players are pretty much more in their prime. I'm not saying Steph's not in his prime, But Steph at 27 has different energy than Steph at 31 Um, because those guys have played so many minutes. I mean, they've played almost an extra season, maybe more, of basketball because of all the finals they've been to, and and that adds up. Um, But Jalen Brown was was great, 9 of 16 from the field, 27 points, 4 of 8 from 3. He's had some ridiculous shooting splits lately too. 
Um, and then going to Tatum, Tatum was nine of 23, so definitely less efficient. Um, but he had nine assists, which if you had paid attention to Tatum's career over time, he's not really a high assist guy. He's maybe a five assist guy or six assist guy. But two games this series, uh, I think game one, he had like 13. Um, and then this game, he had nine. So um, he's still finding a way to impact the game. He was playing good defense. He also missed so many layups where that uh, that shooting percentage, instead of nine to 23, it could be 13 or 14 of 23. And instead of 26 points, he has 34 on some simple missed layups or it's not, I'm not playing the game of if this happened or if that happened, but he missed a couple gimmies. Um, but for Tatum, I felt that he kept shooting, which is an important thing of, I think in game two, he kind of decided not to keep shooting in game one because he didn't really have it as much. Um, but I think he kept shooting and kept himself in it and then eventually got it going. So I thought that was really good team basketball by the Celtics of Jalen Brown's first half, Tatum's second half. And then uh, kind of the third head on this monster is Marcus Smart, where some days, like game seven versus Miami, I mean, he should not be taking the last four or five shots for the Celtics. Um, But the Celtics record is really, really good when he scores around 25 points. And I think there's something of like 12 and two in that range. Um, and he had 24 tonight, so that was really big. And he had a lot of timely buckets, um, which is big because I think the Celtics as a younger team versus the Warriors, when they start losing momentum, they need somebody to make something. And typically Tatum is that guy, but Marcus Smart multiple times yesterday when it felt like the ship is sinking or we're leaking and it's kicked out to Marcus Smart three-pointer and the place erupts um so he did a great job of stopping the bleeding and kind of having that third star is something that i think is really helping boston but is a prime example of what golden state is missing so steph had a good game 54 and a half percent from the field and from three and 31 points um he was still minus 14 though um and clay had another really good game 25 points. He started 0 for 3 and then kept shooting and then was making a few in a row. And him and Steph uh, were kind of single-handedly keeping the Warriors in it for most of the game. Um, And what I think the Warriors are missing right now is Kevin Durant. Because in previous finals, you can have the two, like I would say Steph had probably an A-minus game. Um, and Clay probably had a a B or a B-plus game. But it wasn't enough because the Celtics had three guys in that same kind of point range. And so I think that was a prime example of you missing Kevin Durant. But also I've heard from everybody that Jordan Poole is the third Splash Brother. His last name's Poole. And I, I guess I'm going to continue my Jordan Poole hate. Where was Jordan Poole? I I understand he shot 50% from the field, but he was a total non-factor out there. Um, He was out there for 25 minutes and was, yeah, he's he's your third scoring option besides Wiggins maybe, but I think the Warriors would prefer Jordan Poole and keep Wiggins more focused on defense. Um, So the fact that Jordan Poole was a non-factor is a prime example of why I think the Celtics are in a good spot because the Celtics have a deeper roster. Where the Celtics have maybe, like if Golden State has the best player in this series, then I think the Celtics have the next three or four, um, especially with how Robert Williams is playing. I wouldn't put him above Clay, but Clay has not been great until uh, last night. And so I think it's a thing for the Warriors where I don't know if they have enough talent And I don't know if Steve Kerr is willing to let uh, kind of let these young guys run and and just test it because they could have used Kaminga or Moody and they were nowhere to be found because Steve doesn't like playing younger guys in the finals. Um, But then I think another reason why it was more noticeable tonight that the Warriors, as in Steph and Clay, didn't have enough help is because of Draymond. 
Draymond was clearly not the same. The crowd was not being very nice to Draymond. Um, and he said in his podcast that he was worried about the officials. Um, and so I think he played cautiously and that's not Draymond's game. I, I thought he wasn't very aggressive. Um, normally he attacks a little bit more and I didn't think he, he did that very well. And he was still good defensively, but you can't have the stat line that Draymond has uh, with playing as many minutes as he did. So, I mean, he was one for four from the field with four rebounds and three assists and two turnovers with a minus 13. I mean, that that's not good enough for allegedly your third best player and a future Hall of Famer. Um, I was actually pleased with Wiggins. Uh, I thought Wiggins had a pretty good game. Uh, 43.8% from the field, 7 to 16, 18 points. Um, but he was a little too spotty. But I feel like he's one of those guys where if he gets really hot, then that can be the Warriors' third option. But uh, last night, it was it was not found anywhere. Um, and then quickly getting into some foul stuff too. What surprised me and impressed me was, so Steph had two very early fouls. But Steve Kerr kept playing him, um, which was surprising because they the Celtics were clearly going at Steph defensively. Um, they were attacking him, and that's why he got those fouls. And then later in the game, they were still attacking him, but he wasn't fouling, and so then they were getting easier buckets. But then Steph had four fouls in the third quarter, and Steve Kerr still let him play. So credit for Steph. I think that shows Steph's IQ of not getting those last two fouls um, because he played a lot of minutes with a lot of fouls and the Celtics knew that. Um, but then Draymond was actually the flip. Draymond, Steph had two fouls before Draymond had any. And I think Draymond, Steph already had four when Draymond got his third or fourth. And wouldn't you know, boom, Draymond fouls out. Um, so I would not have won the prop bet yet about Draymond getting ejected. But had I made it ejected or fouled out, then I I would have won some money. Um, but Draymond's going to bounce back. I mean, he's Draymond. He's he's going to bounce back. Great players like that don't have to back to back games where they they aren't themselves. Um, and then previewing Game Four a little. Um, well, Steph kind of got hurt towards the end of this game, so hopefully Steph comes back and is feeling full strength. Because even as a Celtics fan. If I'm going to beat the Warriors, I want to beat the Warriors at full strength. Um, And I don't actually think it would be a close series without Steph. So um, for the quality of the basketball, I hope Steph comes back. Um, But I'll be interested to see what the Warriors do to change their lineup. I think they can use Iguodala more than two minutes. I mean, he's a very veteran presence. You saw what he did against LeBron many years ago um, defensively. But there's no reason he should only have two minutes and nine seconds of playing time in a game where you needed the length against Jalen Brown and those guys. Um, and so maybe he's not as much of a scoring option, but I think he's they could use his presence as well as his length defensively. And I don't know, Iggy, Iggy can make threes. So I, I wouldn't count him out, but I'm surprised Steve Kerr has used him um, as little as he has throughout the series and the playoffs. Um, And then for the Celtics, I think if Robert Williams can stay healthy and play with the same energy and maybe even a little bit more minutes, um, that could be great. Uh, He's just been such a good defender for them. Uh, He he played 25 minutes. Horford played 30. Uh, Tatum had 41 minutes. Jalen Brown had 39 minutes. So if you could get Robert Williams to kind of have Horford level minutes. And as much as I love Grant Williams, because he's a little bit more of a threat offensively, I think if you bumped Grant's minutes down a touch, um, that could help too, because the Warriors really couldn't attack the paint when uh, Robert Williams was in there. Um, I'm also looking for Tatum and Brown to play a complete game. I would say that they both played a really good half um, or t- t- maybe saying Tatum's half was really good might be an overstatement, but they both played a good half. Um, and I'm looking for one of them to actually play a full game. 
and not kind of have a letdown um, in a quarter and go cold where you don't need to score 17 and a quarter, but, but give me eight a quarter. How about that? I, I would take that. Um, and so I'm looking to see if either one of them can do that because if the Celtics win, somebody needs to be finals MVP. Um, and I think Jalen Brown would be that guy right now. Um, but if you have a monster Tatum performance to go up 3-1, then it, it would be hard to not uh, have Tatum in that scenario too. Um, another overall note about the uh, last game, uh, game three, is that I think the Celtics, if you're the Celtics, you should be really encouraged because no player on the Celtics had an A performance. I mean, I think Jalen Brown's a B, B plus, maybe A minus. Tatum's probably a B. Marcus Smart's probably a B plus. I mean, maybe Robert Williams. You give him an A because he was also four for five from the field. Um, but there was no like that guy got hot like Al Horford did uh, or White did in game one. Everybody kind of pinched in and could play a little bit better. Um, so if I'm the Warriors, that definitely makes me nervous that we got beat and it wasn't because they brought their best stuff. It was because we got beat. Um, so yeah, that, that's got to really worry me if I'm the Warriors. And if I'm also the Warriors, I have to, I have to find somebody for that third scoring option, or I have to have, uh, Kyrie and LeBron game six versus the Warriors of a back-to-back 41 point performance from each of them. Um, I'm also looking for Draymond to be fired up and really make a difference again. And I think he will. Um, but I think it should be another really good game, but this is must win for Golden State because I don't think you're going to come and win three games in a row. If you go down three, one, the Celtics are too good defensively and they just showed they can beat you with not their best stuff. Um, but this is, this is why the Warriors are the Warriors. So we're going to see really what they're made of if they still have it. I mean, they're in the finals and they're an unbelievable team. So that's a little rude of me to say that do they still have it? But um, yeah, it's going to be a great game. I think if I had to make a prediction, it's so tough because you want to bet on Curry in these situations. But I think the Celtics are a better team. And if they come in with the requisite intensity and effort, I don't think Golden State can take them, especially if Steph's not 100%. Um, maybe Clay Thompson goes crazy. That's possible. But I'm going to take I'm gonna take the Celtics again uh, to win a close one this time. Um, but yeah, so I'm really looking forward to it. A game's on Friday night and yeah, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. Uh, I will do another game recap after, uh, after game four. So it'll either be three, one or two, two going back. Um, and Golden State will have held serve. Uh, so I will talk to you guys on Saturday after the game. Uh, go Celtics. Thanks for listening. And, uh, we'll talk soon.